Hi, in this tutorial I'm, I'm going to show you how to play audio files in your Ionic framework, Android, and iOS application. This tutorial is going to make use of the Apache Cordova Media plugin as well as the AngularJS extension set NG Cordova. Um, a full write-up on this can be found on my written blog, uh, which I'll link to in this video. So let's go ahead and start by creating a fresh Ionic Framework project. Alright, with the project created, let's go ahead and navigate into it and we're going to add the Android platform. Now if I was on a Mac computer I would also be adding the iOS platform but since I'm running Ubuntu Linux I can only add Android for now. So let's go ahead and clear that. So the next thing we want to do is head over to the um, NG Cordova website and we're going to download the latest um, library release. So I've gone ahead and I've already downloaded that. Let's go ahead and extract it. And I'm going, oops, I'm going to go ahead and copy the min file, the minified version, and that's going to go right in my www.js folder. So with that done, let's go ahead and open our index.html file. Uh, if you followed many of my other videos, you'll notice that this time I'm trying out Atom IO from GitHub instead of Sublime Text. Uh, I'm going to give that a run for a while to see which one I like better. So with our index.html file open, before the cordova.js line, we're going to add ng cordova library. So, with that added, the next thing that we want to do is we want to open up our app.js file. We, know, we need to go ahead and include it as a dependency. So with that added, we're actually ready to start using the plugin. Oh, you know what? We're actually not able to start using it. I forgot to add it. So let's go ahead and add the plugin to our Ionic project. All right, now we're able to start using the, the plugin. find our editor here. So let's go ahead and clean this up a bit. We're going to call this example. And we're going to create a new controller. We're going to add the scope. We're going to add ionic loading. And we're going to add Cordova Media. So let's go ahead and start by creating two functions. The first function is going to be our play function. And we're going to pass that a source. And that's going to be how we're going to play it. So if you follow the NG Cordova uh, instructions, they recommend defining our media source a little differently. I, I like to go ahead and use the Cordova way uh, because it gives me full access to the uh, status callback. So let's go ahead and do it the Cordova way for the sake of this example. So we're passing in the source. I don't really care about the success callback and the error callback, but you can always uh, generate one yourself. Now we're going to add the media success callback and close it off. 
So let's go ahead and create our um, media success callback. Oop, I actually want to call it media status callback. That doesn't that doesn't make any sense right there. I made it a private function because we don't need to access it from the scope. Um, we can just call it from within our controller. And that's going to return a status variable here. So the next thing we want to do is we want to see what our statuses are. So we're going to say if the status is 1, 1 represents um, it is the same thing as saying uh, media uh, media um, what is that media starting so that's the same same thing and if it's if it's uh, starting we actually want to show a a loading indicator And then if it's not starting, if, it, if we get any other status from this callback, we're going to actually hide the indicator. Because when we when we load our when we want to play our files, it might not be instant, and we don't want people to wait around and think that their application froze or there's a glitch or any, any other thing that could cause ne negative feedback from your users. So with our callback with our status callback set up, let's go ahead and continue our play function. So we're actually going to use the the, Cordova, the ng Cordova part now. And we're going to choose to play the media file. So with that said and done, go back into your HTML file. We're going to add our controller here. And we're going to add a button that plays the media. So this button's actually going to pick an MP3 from the internet and play it. So inside our button, we're going to do an ng click, and we're going to say play. So let's go ahead and find a song on the internet. I went ahead and just typed in MP3 sam MP3 sample, and I'm gonna go ahead and copy it. Um, I recommend that you be careful on what sources you choose, just in case it's not free. You don't want any kind of legal trouble. So let's go ahead and add it in here and save. So with that said and done, let's go back to our our terminal, and we're gonna try to run this. Let's start by building. Alright, so it's built. So remember, if you're on iOS, you can also build for iOS. If you're on a Mac, you can build for iOS as well. But since I'm not, I'm just going to do Android. So with it built, let's go ahead and install it to our simulator, which in this case I'm using Jenny Motion. So it is now installed. So let's go ahead and open it, and I'm going to choose play from internet. The loading indicator is there, and I don't know if you can hear it. It, it sounds pretty crappy. It sounds pretty awful because of the simulator. Uh, I don't have a very good audio card, but on the device, I can promise you that it sounds pretty great. Uh, and it's just going to play this 10 second sample. Um, so that's really all there is to it when it comes to playing online. You saw that it showed that. Showed the loading indicator, closed it when it started playing. 
so what happens if you want to play a media file from within your application? So let's go back to our code and we are actually going to add another button. So what, what I did here was, if you want to play media on Android from within your actual binary file, you have to include Android asset as, as the start of your uh, URI. And then what's happening here is I'm including song.mp3 inside my www audio folder. So let's go ahead and make that happen actually. So I'm going to save this mp3 file. find it somewhere. I'm going to rename it here. I'm going to copy it into www and then audio. So let's go ahead and build it again. Let's make sure I saved it. I did save it, good. And I'm going to install it again. And I'm gonna play it from the assets. And it actually played instantly because it didn't need to download it from the internet. It still sounds pretty bad because of the simulator. It'll sound a lot better on the device, but it was instant. And if you wanna include a bunch of audio files inside your application, that's definitely the way to do it. So there's also another scenario. So let's go back into our code. We can also do this. Oops, I'll just type it out again. Let's call it uh, example. And then audio slash song mp3. So what this what this does, I'm not going to run this example, but what it does is it'll actually play a song found at the root of your publicly accessible file system. So in Android's case, it's often referred to as the SD card. Uh, so it'll be found at the root of this in the example folder, audio, and then song.mp3. And this is accessible from pretty much any application on your device. It's not private. It's, it's not inside the encrypted file system. It's, it's just right on the SD card. But these are three ways to, to play audio files. And uh, there's, there's a lot of other functionality like stopping or, or getting the progress, um, all things that you can research through the official plugin documentation. If you like this video and are interested in seeing what else I have to offer, please subscribe to my channel as well as my written web blog. Thank you.